Let me commence by saying how wonderful it is to see a new publisher of music for band appearing on the scene. Uh, we're delighted to see Brooke Wright Music and we want to congratulate Andrew and all of his colleagues uh, for setting up this company and we wish them all the best, especially being brave enough to uh, start the company in these very difficult times. What started me as an arranger? Um, I've always liked brass band orchestration and it's always been something that's fascinated me. I was also uh, a capable uh, transposition when I was in high school. I played the viola uh, with the alto clef of course, but I also um, spent time as a euphonium player transposing E-flat horn and E-flat bass part. The first bands that I directed were Salvation Army bands and many would be the time that uh, we'd be asked to play at a church event and one of the hymns that was required was something that was in the uh, church hymnal and wasn't in the Salvation Army band tune book. So I quickly uh, adopted a policy uh, of being able to arrange the hymn tune quickly uh, for, for a brass band and be able to use it in, in the service or whatever event it was. Um, after a year or two, I commenced with uh, competition bands and there there was always the impetus to spru spruce up, to spice up the programmes uh, by including uh, arrangements by the band's conductor. The soloists in the bands that I was directing were always an inspiration. I'm one of the first uh, people that I should mention in that regard is Trevor Groom, uh, principal euphonium of the GUS band that I was directing at the time. Another soloist who has inspired me a lot has been Brett Baker. He went on tour with the William Davis band just before we moved to the United States and since that time I've done a dozen or so arrangements for him. He's also visited as a guest soloist, so we've maintained that, that contact. Uh, when I was 11, my family moved to Bradford in Yorkshire, and uh, many would regard that as the home of brass band country, but I was fortunate at the time to receive encouragement, not only in the Salvation Army band that I was playing in, but we had a very capable school band. There was the Bradford Schools Band, the Yorkshire Schools Band, and eventually I uh, became a member of the National Youth Brass Band. I would have to mention Leslie Condon and had the privilege of playing under his baton in a number of Salvation Army music camps. And also, uh, I would be remiss if I didn't mention Geoffrey Brand, who had the inspiration if that's the right word to use, uh, to invite me to GUS and to embark on conducting with that band. It's always been my goal as an arranger to use the various uh, colours that are available within the brass band palette. Um, there are so many arrangements out there where there's endless doubling of parts and that can lead to a very monotonous sound in my view and uh, I've always aimed to use the colours that are available within the brass band uh, to maximum ability. As an arranger, it's always a highlight to conduct one's, one's own arrangements and, and particularly when the performance is going very well. And, it, it would be out of order if I didn't mention that in 1980, 40 years ago, would you believe, uh, one of my arrangements, the Berlioz Overture, Beatrice and Benedict, was used uh, as the test piece for the regional contest in Britain. <laughs> So why the Tchaikovsky Nutcracker Suite as my first uh, publication within the Brookwright K 
catalog. It's always been a very popular work and particularly as a family uh, we have enjoyed seeing performances each year and we've particularly appreciated the fact that our granddaughter Zoe has enjoyed the performances. I first arranged the march from the Nutcracker Suite back in the 1980s when I was within uh, with the GUS band but that has been used several times since. Uh, more recently I arranged a tray pack and then uh, the most recent arrangement to be completed was the Waltz of the Flowers. That of course was a bigger challenge, uh, more involved orchestration. Andrew Wainwright and I have already talked about uh, future Keith Wilkinson arrangements to appear in the Brooke Wright catalogue and it's fair to say that I always have some arranging on the go. There's always something on the table that I'm working on and particularly during these COVID-19 times uh, when the regular brass band activities are more sparsely uh, uh, on the ground and uh, there's other things around. So you can expect to see uh, several more publications from Keith Wilkinson in the Brook Wright catalogue and I look forward to seeing those in print. I look forward to performing them.